Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rukakadash, double honors to our apostles, known as a great millstone, for teaching this word in truth and sincerity. And Shalom to all your brothers out there on the highways and hedges, all right, teaching this word in faith. And Shalom to the elect. Okay, this is uh, the brother Gad. I want him to do a quick video on what just happened uh, the other day, all right. Um, California. They were signing a, a petition to, to, for soda taxes, but the whole time it was the soda companies like Coca-Cola and Pepsi behind it, okay? And now it says, under pressure, California lawmakers banned soda taxes for 12 years. California cities and counties will be barred from adopting soda taxes for the next 12 years under the legislative deal that marks a big victory for the influential beverage company, one that state lawmakers said holds Californians hostage. On Thursday, the state legislature rushed to approve the last-minute quid pro quo deal between one of the state's largest labor unions and the American Beverage Association. Democratic Governor Jerry Brown signed the measure shortly after the vote. The bill gives the industry a reprieve in California from any future local soda taxes until January 1, 2031. In return, cities and counties will avoid a costly fight at the ballot box on a broader proposal that could have made it more difficult for them to raise general taxes and fees. It was a vote that several frustrated lawmakers described as a reluctant but necessary choice that will safeguard city and county revenues. The industry is aiming basically at a nuclear weapon at government in California and saying, if you don't want, if you don't do what we want, we're going to pull the trigger and you're not going to be able to fund basic government services, said State Senator Scott Weiner. This is a pick your poison kind of situation, a Sophie's choice, if you will. Yeah, so... They, they they pinned a, the, the I don't know how they did it, but of course, these uh, state senators they're working right with the soda companies. It mainly is the main guy is the governor, all right. It says uh, backers of the initiative, which would have made it harder for local governments to raise taxes, had until Thursday to pull their measure off the November ballot, an election year deadline that required lawmakers that quickly and rush a deal craft over the weekend to votes this week. In a message he sent after signing the bill, Brown called the barely averted ballot initiative an abomination. He said he had heard from the mayor of countless cities who had called to voice their alarm and to strong support the compromise which the bill represents. Yeah, because what happened was that... Oh, I'll keep reading. The initiative called the Tax Fairness, Transparency, and Accountability Act of 2018 was sponsored by the American Beverage Association. It sought to increase the voter threshold for cities and counties to levy taxes and fees from a simple majority to a two-thirds vote. It also would have required a two-thirds majority for tax and fee votes by local governing bodies, such as city councils and county boards. It was a tactic, it was a tactic intended to make it harder for cities to get the votes for new taxes on soda which has been a growing target of public health advocates and local governments across the country. Yeah, so this is what happened. They they said, hey, tax fairness, transparency. That's actually a good thing to vote for, not to be taxed. But the government, they want to, have, they want to be able to tax you at any moment. So the soda company is like, hey, we'll allow you to keep, to keep your power to tax as long as you do not tax soda. <laughs> so... This whole Tax Fairness, Transparency, and Ac Accountability Act was taken away and replaced with not taxing soda. It was a tactic intended to make it harder for cities to get the votes for new taxes on soda, which has been a growing target of public health advocates and local governments across the country. But the initiative also would have affected new taxes and fees for libraries, public safety, and other government services, triggering fears among local governments and unions that they might not be able to raise the revenue they need in time. Yeah, because that's a bunch of bullshit, right? They already ha they want to raise taxes. In other words, it's taking away the power of them to be able to raise taxes so easily. Oh, look. Oh, we can't fund libraries. That's the first thing they're going to say. Libraries, public safety. You know? I mean, in all actuality, they won't be able to, you know, steal more of your money to 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 fund their this failing society, failing infrastructure. In a statement, the American Beverage Association said the legislation decision would provide protections for working families. Okay, so studies have found that sugary drinks can increase the risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and other chronic health conditions. All right, so the soda company, 
you soda companies are the new cigarette companies, right? Everyone's finding out that sodas are killing everybody. And it should be taxed just like alcohol is taxed. And it should be taxed just like how cigarettes is taxed, right? If it's killing everybody, but they're too powerful. And they, they, finessed, <laughs> they finessed the state of California. And that's a good thing. All right? I'm going to bring out the scripture. Because there's a... And then here it is, this guy. Jerry Brown dined with soda industry representatives ahead of tax ban deal. Look at this guy. In the photo obtained by Sacramento Bee, Jerry Brown and his wife posed with representatives of Pepsi, Coca-Cola, and the American Beverage Association, among other identified individuals, following a private dinner at the governor's mansion. So here he's chilling with all these big, big wig uh, soda company guys. And I wonder if they were drinking soda at the at that dinner, you know? Because now people realize soda soda is a dying industry. The only way it, it survives is because it's so cheap. And it's cheaper than water. <laughs> but that shows you what kind of backwards-ass society we live in. This is Baruch 3 and 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our power. Yeah, so we're subject to payments. Are the soda companies, are they subject to payments? Obviously not. All right, they're, they're able to, to, to fund, they can use this government, this democracy, which it shows you it's a big scam, it's a big sham, it's all fake. Um, you can easily buy your way into anything. That's why this place really needs to be destroyed. You can't change it. You can't change America from the inside. You want to be a, you know, you're going to get taxed. That's just the way it is. It says, wherefore thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments. Right? We're subject to payments. We got to pay. We got to pay taxes. Well, the soda companies, they're giving free reign to kill Israelites. Right? The soda companies, the main people that drink soda these days are Israelites. From the ghettos, from the barrios, from the reservations, from the hoods of hoods. They're sipping, you know, Sprite with lean in it. <laughs> Being dirt bags. Esau isn't really drinking soda like that, right? And, and when I say Esau, I'm talking about these people with money. They're not drinking soda, okay? And if they are, they're, they're, they're gone. They're, they're, gonna, they're gone. And this is this is just the way it is. I'm going to bring out uh, scripture in uh, the blue letter. All right, because, you know, even in the time of our Lord, he was he was subject into payments, you know. You know, we, we all, the time of the Romans were here again. This is uh, Mark 12 and 13. And they send unto him certain of the Pharisees, into the Herodians to catch him in his words. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of the Most High and truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Yeah, yeah, so they're, they're setting, they're trying to set up the Lord. Like how, how can you be so righteous, but you gotta, you gotta give tribute to Caesar, or do you? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny, that I may see it. And they brought it. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and inscription, superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Shai answered, said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to the Most High the things that are of the Most High. And they marveled at him. Yeah, so he said, "Bring me that penny." And if you look at the dollar bill, you look at you look at your pennies. It has an Edomite on it, man. It has Caesar on it. A specific, one of the Caesars is George Washington. He happened to be a Caesar. Abraham Lincoln, he was a Caesar at one point, or AKA a president. And so, the Lord said, "Hey, that's Caesar's money. It's not. It's not the Lord's money, but." Proving that we're subject to these payments, right? That the so-called white man, he's, he's in charge of everything. That's why he's able to, to freely give you poison, right? Because soda, 
that shit is poison. That this shit kills you. This shit is not meant to go in your body. Right? People use so people mechanics they use sodas to uh clean uh the clean rust. But you you going to put that in your body. Right? But yeah, like all this proves is that one thing, you know, you so-called white people, you're in charge. You control this world. But it's at a downfall. It's at a rapid decline. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Yeah. Yeah, who is the... If it's not the so-called white man, if this guy's not the devil, who is he? And look, you got a bunch of Edomites and I haven't got to, I haven't got to point them out. I haven't got to point out what's going on here, all right? And so, yeah, you you Americans, you Californians specifically are through. Get ready to get near you know, all the all the so-called white man, the government is going to take more of your money. He's going to keep taking it until... Um, Martial law kicks in, right? The race wars and, and all out chaos on the streets, blood in the streets. With that, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor and to Yahweh by Shimmy Shai and uh, death to you so called white people in your society in America, right? It's done, it's finished, and your soda, your poison, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not gonna uh, deceive us with it, right? With that, we say shalom.